Welcome back, Ultimate fans, to Ulti World's live streaming coverage from just outside of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And Blaine, we have the Youth Club Championships. And we have semifinal action from the girls under 20 division. At Atlanta, Cat Atlanta. They'll be taking on Utah Swarm for a chance at a championship. Try and continue the run into the final. It's going to be a great matchup, Keith. Both of these teams have been dominant throughout the tournament. Atlanta taking the loss to Oregon Downpour, the number one overall seed and heavy favorite to win again, but winning their quarterfinal 15-2 over Devil. And on the other side, undefeated Utah Swarm Closest game, 15-10 over Seven Hills out of Washington, but winning their quarterfinal over Philadelphia, 15-5. And when you talk about this Catlanta team, you have to talk about Quincy Booth, number 11. Yeah, we see her with the disc getting ready to pull. And an experienced player who uh, has played at the elite club level, was selected for the Team USA U.S. national team, the girls division. Uh, for the 2020 team that didn't get the chance to compete due to the coronavirus pandemic. But uh, a an accolade on the resume nonetheless, uh, despite not getting the chance to get the full experience. And for Utah Swarm, incredible depth in this Utah scene. And expect to see a lot from number 15, Audrey Selfridge, 22 goals so far on the tournament. And Annika Archibald with 13 assists. Booth getting ready to pull for Atlanta as we get this semifinal started. Atlanta in the blacks pulling to Utah in the whites. Underway with our first couple touches. Disc into the hands of Abby Davis. Now ahead up the sideline. Now through the middle. Really Terstra looking for a connection downfield, but Davis can't quite get to it. So first break chance for Atlanta coming shortly into this game. Matchup defense for both sides to start. Tough catch. Katie Sanders snagging that one and now looking for options. Lifts one over the mark to Booth. Get our first touch for Quincy Booth, but what assuredly will not be the last. Great backhand to space, but uh, it looks like there's a call. Looks like a pick call. So it was on that first, and it was on a throw from her. Okay, and it affected that throw. She was starting her, and she thought I threw to her. Okay, do you think you would have had a play on that disc? Okay, then it'll say it'll be one throw, so it'll be back to the original one there. And it'll come installing one. Fully fledged observers now on YCC games, started for the first time last year after instructional observers in the past. With his offense back underway. Zoe DeLuca dropping that reset backwards. Back to Booth. Really deep cutter group for Atlanta. Booth tries to fight one into the space that they're attacking. Keith Rayner joined in the booth by Charlie Eisenhood. Stella Onder advancing. Swarm with their first deep shot, setting one of the end zone. Great effort from the cutter, but Abby Tara not able to get to that one. Throw just too far. Booth up line. Deep throw goes up, but 
short armed by Keely Baker. Terpstra with the disc. Great grab by Terpstra just outside the end zone. Has an up line option. Nice work on the mark to deny it. And that yields a turnover. So great work from Baker. Stops the up line cut at the point of attack and gets rewarded with the turnover. Both teams getting some good offensive flow, but execution mistakes costing some turnovers so far. A monster throw from Booth. And a layout catch on the other end from DeLuca. DeLuca now looking for options as the stall count's climbing. Sanders steps away. But you got to throw it in this game, and she does. Finds DeLuca to get Catalina on the board. And they open with a break. Well, I get three chances at it. And third time is the charm. Great shot from Booth deep. Stepping out and putting a ton of power behind the throw. DeLuca laying out to make the catch. Excellent concentration. And then DeLuca patiently waits for a reset. And then attacks into the end zone. Gets her defender face guarding and then just trails off towards that back cone. Opening break for Atlanta. Yeah, smart play from DeLuca to clear with her head up. Uh, especially young players, it's easy to make that clear and cut with your head down and maybe not even see that poach is occurring, but Toluca has the wherewithal to recognize her defender sitting in the space and try and camp out in that back corner. We see Swarm's offense talking it out after giving up the opening break. Got, got some chances too, including all the way down in the red zone. Booth ready in the pull. Had a chance to watch some of Swarm, uh, the Catalina semifinal, or quarterfinal, excuse me, that they won yesterday to make it into this game. And, and Quincy Booth played pretty much, if not every point, for this team. Throw up to Tara. Now Turfster taking a shot. Deep shots coming regularly from these two teams. Ander on the goal line. Resets to Terpstra. Swarm trying to get organized. And after they clear the space, they're able to attack more effectively. Margaret Davis gets free on the open side for a uh, one, score, one possession hold for Utah. That's a good bounce back after the break. Excellent deep shot. Goes into the hands of Onder. And then chipped into the end zone for Margaret Davis. It's all tied at 1-1s. One -one and both teams, Charlie, really looking to get going in the deep space. Yeah, and that's going to open up offense throughout the game. Both teams clamping hard on the undercuts early in the game. Good reset defense for both teams as well. We've seen some turnovers because of that, but those deep cuts will start to shift the defense. See the Utah coaching staff looking to make some decisions about the defensive tactics for this point. Lynn on the other end looks ready to go. No booth for this point, so uh, don't know how many boothless points we'll get, but Atlanta's gonna try and punch one in without uh, their well-known 
playmaker. She played two deep points to start and not out on this offensive line. Sure, we'll see her cross over if they need her. Full field pull. Baker Great Lugan. coverage on the vert stack from Swarm. You can see a, a clear lane poach up front. Handlers get it poaching off the reset and it works. Stops the upfield throws and a mistake from Baker. Short field now for Swarm. Well, that's great downfield coverage. Getting the offense out of sync and creating that turnover. Great swing from Swarm and into the end zone they go. They struggled a little bit on the first point, but the offense is clicking now as they get their first break of the game. Well, an awesome opening D point for a Utah. Really smart surrounding coverage of the stack. Lane poaches to take away the easy flow offense. And Atlanta's going to have to make quick adjustments. And of course, that's just an errant swing pass in some ways, but that's created by the chaos of the defense. And then Archibald into the end zone for Audrey Selfridge. Yeah, I love, love the, the movement to begin that possession for Swarm. D don't waste time looking upfield at options that may not be there. It's so tempting when you're near the end zone, especially. You know, oh, I want to throw this assist. That's going to go on the stat sheet. If I swing it, no, how will anybody even know I was here? Uh, but discipline, immediate swing, early look pays off for Swarm. Short, a short break for... Quincy Booth back out on the line. Well, her throwing ability is going to be paramount against this tough Utah defense. She's going to be able to break down poaches. And we see her take the centering pass right away. As well as the shot, winding up another big backhand. And reeled in. Great catch. So she's, the throws have been big, but the catches have been on the spot for Atlanta. Amelia Smith hauls it in for the score. Well, it wasn't just Booth coming onto the field. They also switched to a horizontal stack, completely changing the look after point number one. And they get exactly what you want out of a vert stack, which is a slashing cut from the break side to the strong side. Smith gets a step. Booth puts it up. Look at the power in her backhand. And a great catch. I mean, really, that is that is tough play to make. Yeah, Booth, Booth's giant throwing radius is giving her receivers a shot at it, but they, they've been asked to make plays in, in both connections that have led to Catalina scores. But Swarm's going to have to find a way to deal with the, the powerful throws here. If that's, if that's going to be... Plan A, they're going to have to try and force Atlanta into plan B. So Swarm's offense back out on the line. Had a great point there their last time out. Their first point, a little bit rocky, so they got broken. We'll see uh, which one of those they trend towards their third try. One break apiece, and I think we're in for a treat in this semifinal here at the Youth Club Championships. A, a blown coverage. There's a player completely open, but now closed down by Booth, who's switched from poaching to matching up. Offense back into a traditional look, but a speculative upline throw gets away. Happy Davis trying to send that one up the line. Booth picks up for another break chance. Booth's swing sails a bit. 
Melissa Swalberg picks up, looking to initiate play quickly. Booth has been aggressively poaching downfield. Now on the mark. And a throw to the end zone, a reset back to Lily Terpstra. She gives it to Davis for the score. And Swarm scores on their second chance for the hold. Just a nice upline move. And you can see how much of an impact Quincy Booth is going to have on this game, good and bad. We've seen some great shots. We've also seen some turnovers. She's going to be a high volume shooter. And she's also roaming defensively, but she got punished there. Uh, against worse teams, she can get away with hanging out in the deep space and not covering a player in a more difficult to attack position. But Utah's throwers are willing to hit those poaches. We saw that on that point. And Swarma, I think maybe going to spread the wealth a little bit more, try and rely on their depth. Uh, but Lilith Terpstra off to a nice start. She's got a pair of assists and has brought some, uh, some offensive poise to Swarm. Booth staying out for this offensive point. She won't have... Won't have to try and fight to get the disc first. It's just going to be sent to her. Centered now. Deep throw going up. And perhaps losing her footing as she tried to line up a bid is Cecilia Pardo, but would have been difficult for her to get within range of that one. But first throw blocked. So Booth ready to pick up the disc with a short field. Some poachers on the vertical stack. Booth gives and goes. Lots of congestion in front of her, but she navigates it deftly Booth into the end zone for Calliope Cutchins. All back to even the threes. Initial deep shot, good idea, just a little too much on the throw. But a quick turnover back to Atlanta and then Booth using her size to get up over the mark. Little flip backhand. In the hands of Cutchins for the goal. Utah. Looking to respond with a hold of their own. Offense has gotten a bit more rhythm. Booth signals readiness. You can see Booth wearing, uh, wearing the pants today. Uh, it is a bit chillier. Uh, probably the coolest it's been for the four days of competition that we've been here in Blaine. Started with the Adult Club US Open. That is now concluded yesterday's finals and we're into the final day of YCC some overlap now between these two events it's been a really great community building effort Terpstra advancing the disc now Emma Simpson Smallberg gets up the line and punches it in to Terpstra and another clean 0-1 hold for Swarm. Yeah, an all open side the whole way up the field. Atlanta's gonna have to figure out a way to get Utah working a little bit harder. You see just 
Cuts straight up the open side. Too many easy strike cuts. Reset defense going to have to improve. And that's one of those things that, uh, as a coach, you know, talk about with players and say, like, if we can't stop the open side attack, we can't work on anything else. All, all the other stuff you want to work on, our zone defenses, our poaches, you know, how do we defend this thing, uh, this on the mark. If we can't just stop the open side downfield, all that other stuff won't matter. Got to have the foundation if you want to build, build on, onto that. But it's got to start there. Booth, who's a, a, a coach already, I believe. I think she actually helps coach uh, the Decatur High School girls team, which has been really successful. Georgia State champs in putting, 2022. Putting that to good use and uh, get an extra coach on the staff, you know? So pull goes up for Monica Archibald. One break apiece. Booth slings one into the open side. Sanders looking deep. And the, the game plan for Atlanta is uh, is clear. No, no subtlety here. Swarm getting going the other way. Now into the red zone with a chance to break. Lucy Leary trying to find an option and gets one and it's continued into the end zone. Swarm breaks and they're driving the bus now on a Garchibald and taking the bus into the selfie. I didn't know buses could take <laughs> selfies, Keith. Look, it, technology is a wonderful thing, Charlie. Gen Z knows more about these things than I do at this point. Maybe maybe it's not the bus. Maybe they're in the car and then and filming the TikTok. I don't even know. <laughs> well, you see, going aggressively deep, but that was never really open. Audrey Selfridge able to get an easy block. And then just to... Reset pass to an open side cutter. Taking a selfie. Up a break. Put that in the profile pic, you know. And uh, nice work. McKinley Maurer on the assist. And uh, one of the things that, that Swarm is doing well is they are setting up continue cuts. You know, Maurer took that reset and already had a cut streaking into the open space. And we saw the same thing when the D-line got the disc last time and swung it around the field for another score. The, the cuts are just coming well-timed, getting room. Throwers don't have to wait for somebody to get open, at least for the D-line now, for Swarm. And they, they're, they're in a great rhythm on both, both D-line and O-line uh, as far as their offense is concerned. Booth initiating play up field. And that disc trails away, intercepted a second straight block for Audrey Selfridge. Maurer over to Cass Record. Now Miriam Baird. Swarm looking to break after the Selfridge block. Sanders just putting that out and Selfridge intercepting it. Selfridge resets and I don't know if that was saved or yes it was. Fantastic catch by Wrecker. Nice defense on the up line however gets a turnover. Nice work from Sagan Yarborough to pressure the offense into a turn. You can see that Utah's defenders have started doing a lot more to back players at the back of the stack. And good upline defense gets another turnover. And now we're able to swat that throw from Amelia Smith away. 
Selfridge looking towards the end zone, but Booth flies in for the interception and now winds up a huge backhand only for a defender to jump in the way. We have a player down as Booth tries to advance it. Oh, it should be coming back due to the injury. I think that's Naomi Norton. That player cl clearly down, injury clearly occurring prior to the throw. So, Eva Flom, I believe, taking that point off. Hard to tell from here that the stripes on the on the Catalina jerseys, a nice touch, but do make it a little difficult to read the numbers. So probably just figuring out where the stall count should be as play will begin once more. Fly and McCutcheon's coming on the field for Atlanta. And nowhere for Booth to go and stretch to force one up and Wrecker intercepts. Now into the end zone. Throw from Baird. And a low catch saved by Tory Newswander. And Swarm. Uh, the, the Swarm is swarming. I mean, they're, they're buzzing right now, up 6-3. Well, I think we're seeing through the first third of this game, Utah is a little more disciplined than Atlanta. Atlanta has a clear game plan. They want to try to use Booth and their athletes to attack the deep space. Utah got beat by that a couple times, but they've adjusted defensively and they're just doing a better job of upline coverage. When you think about that compared to what we saw from Atlanta's defense against Utah. And the top to bottom skill level that we're seeing right now from Utah is at a higher level than Atlanta. And so now they're out to a two break lead. Yeah, we see some of the swarm fans on the sideline. Utah has a, a number of teams uh, across the different divisions here at the tournament. And you know, the, the rise uh, to prominence of the Utah community is a relatively recent phenomenon. You know, as a former Atlanta youth player myself, I know that we've always kind of built up our, our spot in the national conversation, but Utah's a relative newcomer to that forefront, but it just seems like in every division, the Utah teams are getting better. Adult division, college division, youth divisions. You know, Lone Peak boys winning the high school national invite this uh, this year. And girls team also did a, a wonderful job in reaching the semifinals, I believe. So uh, you keep seeing the, these Utah teams just get better and better every year. Yeah, arguably Lone Peak girls team, which only has one representative on this Utah Swarm Remarkable. YCC team. They are arguably the second best team at the high school national invite in the girls division. A, uh, a distant second, however. A distant second. Given, uh, given the strength to South, South Eugene, Eugene, who's, uh, who's highly represented on the Oregon downpour team that is very likely to win the championship later today on the stream here on field 13. If, if they can get through their semifinal, which is, is taking place now, uh, but they beat this Catalina team 15-4, and I, I believe that's the most goals that they have conceded at all is four to Atlanta. They uh, blanked their opponent in quarterfinals yesterday. You don't, you don't see that a lot. <laughs> you do not, especially against the number two overall seed, Triangle Warhawks. Now, Warhawks were probably a little overseeded at number two, but still 15-0. Uh, you, you just, you don't see that from a, youth community of that caliber. I mean, the, the rankings, we're, we're in silly season for USA Ultimate Club rankings, but Oregon Downpour is like the eighth ranked team in adult women's right now. <laughs> That's plausible that they would be competitive at the club championships. Booth played at the club championships herself. She put that knowledge to good use. What up? 
cannon. The lefty backhand. Uh, you got to try force and flick at some point because these backhands are towering. What an absolute strike from Booth. And Cecilia Pardo going deep, getting some separation. And, and that's what Utah can't let happen. I mean, when Booth has the disc, you have to be in back your cutter mode. I, you cannot let somebody get behind you because she's going to do this. Incredible shot from a standstill. And Pardo, great catch. Booth, Booth does such an excellent job creating torque with her throws. You see what she goes for those backhand windups. Uh, she really brings the disc far back uh, as she curls her body to generate more power. And tall players like that often can be more powerful throwers when they learn to control that. Uh, Booth able to really apply so much power in these throws and send crisp deep throws. I mean, we, we've seen her throw a couple over throws, but they, they have you know not been 20 yards beyond their reach, she's able to have the disc still slow down at the end of its flight because it's got a great angle on it as she sends it. It's a big hold for Atlanta. But they're gonna have to start figuring some things out defensively. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if a Swarm's offense turned it to their first point. Speaking of figuring things out, Atlanta coming out with a zone now, trying to mix things up. Yeah, and that's exactly the right thing to do. You get beat pretty easily on the previous Utah offensive point, playing in a matchup. Try something different. A blade from Terpstra gets the dish forward. Booth nearly intercepts it, but caught prior to Booth getting involved. Swarm unbothered as continue to keep the disc moving. Simpson gained some yards on the swing to Swalberg. Now a bit of a jailbreak, excellent fake. Stella Anders with the nasty crossover. Frees up the space into the end zone. That's great zone offense. Leaving Atlanta searching for answers. Little give and go action, then the pump fake. Like she's going back to Davis, but that opens up the throwing lane into the end zone for Abby Davis. And that's, that's a smart fake. I mean, Booth has been very aggressive on defense, uh, coming in with kind of these late attacks, using her length to break up plays or make interceptions. And Andre just recognizing that aggressiveness and throwing that fake really with intention to move the defender opens up some space for the throw to Newswander. The D-line gets hyped up. By the sideline presence. And we get the, one of my favorite cheers from, uh, from the days of yours. What's that smell, ATL? I mean, that is a, that is a Atlanta-wide cheer. It's long been such a great disc community. Getting the disc up to completely uncovered receivers. Not sure if it was confusion on defense or just some poaching gone wrong. But once they put the pressure on, it's too much for Catalina to handle. Utah has been very efficient once they've been able to generate break chances. Now here's a deep throw and great read. Selfridge comes back under to collect it and then drops it off in the end zone for Miriam Baird. And just like that, we're at a halftime. Swarm suddenly with the big lead. Swarming defense leading to quick attack offense. 
very good in transition on route to four first half breaks. And Atlanta really struggling to find an offensive rhythm in the latter part of this first half. And even the breaks going Utah's way. Yeah, maybe maybe the maybe the uh, wide open players were just a lull Atlanta to a false sense of security because uh, just like that the pressure the switch flipped and Atlanta quickly gave the disc away and then it was off to the races for Swart. So parents taking in the action as we take a look at the game stats so far. I mean, both teams have had turnovers, but you see the break chances very much in favor of Utah. And those early clean holds for Atlanta started to evaporate later in the first half. And Swarm out to a strong lead. And remember, they were broken to start. And since then, it's really been all Swarm. 7-3 run after that opening break. Yeah, Swarm in the, here in the semifinals trying to fight for the final. The boys are, are doing the same thing in the under-20 division. We'll see if they can have the same kind of success because this Utah Swarm side is up 8-4 with an impressive first half performance. See if they can close it out. Downfield right away looking for Impol and Impol with an incredible grab against his momentum to save that one. goes up. It's now a hook for the end zone. Isabella Cope Musla, she makes the grab. The future is now. now. I waited for you 
It's Clyde looking for a massive backhand, looking for Corvo downfield. Clyde going for the hammer, looking for Vega, and Vega all alone. Clyde with the backhand, fake setting up an actual backhand, going for the full field, and again, he's able to do so. See a big forehand from Clyde, and that one is tracked down. Smith, he's going for another big forehand. That is on the money. Indianapolis Incognito breaks for the win, 15-13. They're heading to the YCC fight. Win ball to the end zone for Logan Williams and the Incognito score. That's a game winner. The last 50 years have seen a lot of positive change. Around a whole range of important issues and some things remain reassuringly unchanged. Like the spirit of our game. Ultimate is 50 years young and still a perfect circle. Of fair play, athletic pursuit, and camaraderie. In fact, Ultimate was a social network. Before social networks even existed. Respetamos nuestras diferencias. And understand the value that they add. The revolution of the disc in flight continues to prove that there's nothing we can't achieve when we pull together. Long live ultimate. Larga vida ultimate. Long live ultimate. And we are back getting ready to begin the second half of this under 20 girls division semifinal here at the youth club championships keith rayner joined by charlie eisenhood and utah with a great second quarter run to build an 8-4 lead they'll pull to catlana big offensive point here for catlana if they want to stay in this game baker looking deep in the game plan has to change from the first half but Archibald waiting arms to catch that one. But a scary moment here. Yeah. That looks so bad on the replay, but just Maybe, yeah, kind of, when she came down, got her head whipped into the ground as her feet went out from under her. And that's always a scary moment because even something that looks relatively innocuous at first glance, that can cause a concussion. Tended to now by training staff. I've witnessed uh, perhaps what, what feels like too many of these kinds of conversations, but in an, any sport, there's just Potential risk, and hopefully everybody will be okay. Take a brief break. Let the medical staff sort it out. We'll be back. Swarm up 8-4. There is a place where we are us at our best. A place where everyone is welcome. Regardless of age, shape, skin color, or anything else that tries to box people in. A place where we defy the odds defy the naysayers 
and even defy gravity. A place where it's accepted that success doesn't belong to the faint-hearted. It belongs to the brave, to the determined. A place that knows grit, knows grace, knows bright lights, and knows empty bleachers. A place where we were... Play getting set to resume. First point of the second half, and a break chance now for Swarm. Had a brief injury break. Player now being tended to by the trainers. And a turnover for Swarm. We haven't seen many of those recently. High throw. Catalina set to pick up again. Booth has a wide open target. DeLuca. But DeLuca's forehand can't quite reach the player she's aiming for. Nice transition from Catalina into their zone defense, however. Can be difficult for an O-line transition into zone. And Swarm, however, carving through it to midfield. Archibald to Wrecker. Wrecker tries to fit one through the zone, deflected but saved by Maurer. Great patience by Maurer to find Selfridge. Selfridge able to go over the top as the zone started to clamp down on the easy resets. Big throw to get off the line. Atlanta staying with it as they get close to the end zone. I think I've seen a shift in philosophy over the past few years as house teams approach this. Fewer and fewer teams transitioning out as they approach the red zone. Now our holding is defense starting to stagnate a little bit. And that means they lose track of a downfield target. Selfridge breaks free. Swarm breaks to start the second half. They're up 9-4. Really high quality offense from the D-line for Swarm. Taking their time, hitting open hands. Selfridge breaks across with the blading forehand to really open up the space. And let's talk a little bit about Audrey Selfridge. She's had a huge impact on the game. Getting open in the deep space. Throwing assists. She's got two goals, an assist, a pair of blocks. And doing a little bit of everything for this team. And I think something that doesn't show up on a traditional box score is some of the tough throws that she's made. We saw one on that previous point. They're kind of getting a little bit stagnant offensively. And she throws over the top with the forehand to open up that entire space. We see the Catlanta player getting carted off. Hope she's OK. Going to get tended to further by medical staff. Got her head whipped into the ground as she made some contact with Archibald. You know, we, we talked earlier about all, all the success that we've seen from uh, Utah Area Ultimate and the Salt Lake AUDL team is still alive in the playoffs. And Audrey's brother, Will, a nice season started off with that team, although uh, I believe he ended up actually, actually getting hurt, not, not able to complete the season, but Selfridges making their mark is just a part of that rising tide in, in the entire Utah scene. Reset error. Gives a short field for Swarm, and this is the danger zone right now for Atlanta. Selfridge cross field. And a huge layout catch for the score. Annika Archibald takes flight 
to bring in that throw from Newswander. And that is an exclamation point on a big score that's going to really extend the lead. Just another reset mistake from Atlanta. And then some fireworks on the other side. Archibald, full extension layout. Newswander sending it into the end zone. Archibald delivering on the other end. And Archibald hyped and deservedly so. Biggest play of the game thus far. and Puts her team out to a commanding 10-4 lead. Swarm looking like they're going to be moving on to the final. Likely to face Oregon Downpour, who's been dominant, the number one overall seed. And Leave it last count, 8-3. They were up in the semifinal on the field behind us. It was a few minutes ago, so probably out of the half now, but good score updates as they come in. Would be quite a matchup. Fan of Melissa. So Atlanta searching for answers, and step one is just got to get the offense to get a hold, get off the field, get your defense back out there. Sometimes it can be hard to dictate the game from from the offensive foot. You know, you you want to you want to decide the pace of the game. You want to decide what kind of defense is being run. You want to pick the matchups so that you can try and generate some turnovers, get some momentum going. It can be, it can be difficult if you're uh, out on O. The offense for Atlanta really has not found a, a, another gear to go to outside of the big deep attack. That, that's really the quandary for them at this moment. Big throw to space from Booth, but nobody's home. But a mistake near the end zone is going to give a short field to Atlanta, and this is a, a golden opportunity if they want to fight back into it. Well, Atlanta needs to have more options offensively. Here, though, they get a short field. This is must-score territory for Atlanta. And we've seen this actually the few times Atlanta's been in the red zone, a lot of poaching. And I think that's actually a pretty smart play from Booth. Not sure her teammates were expecting that throw, but you see Swarm basically like setting up poaches on each side of the vert stack. Booth trying to attack into the empty space. Snares that high throw, and now using the transition opportunity to go straight to the end zone. Well played by Atlanta. Sophie Marie Morgan brings in the score, and Atlanta gets off the field with a hole. That was a great defensive point once again, though, from Swarm. They are taking away the primary options for Atlanta. Good transition, backhand shot from Booth. You know, Utah's been sticking with a force flick, a force righty flick, I should note, and Quincy Booth has been happy to have that side for her backhands. You mentioned it earlier, maybe they should try switching to a forehand force on Booth, which would mean a backhand force on the rest of the team. I, I, don't, have you, I don't think we've seen her throw a forehand hook yet. So you got to at least make her sh make her show you that she's got it, and uh, she probably does. But you got to at least make her prove it. And uh, you know, if, I, if I'm Atlanta, uh, I I love Booth's decision to attack in transition, and I think that that's something that Atlanta could try and use as a comeback mechanic. Now they're out on defense, uh, maybe try and push the pace. Maybe you run zone, even if zone maybe slightly less effective than matching up one on one. Uh, because it gives you better transition opportunities. Might be able to get, get play reinitiated faster, get some mismatches, get going in the deep space. Uh, if you want to attack deep, doing it from the defensive end can actually be easier sometimes than the offensive end. Booth ready to pull. This, th this Swarm team has shown so much discipline throughout this game. Taking the disc away can be really difficult. Swalberg fields the pull. More great work from Terpstra. It's just been so dependable for Utah. Completely uncovered. Basically, just a pull play working perfectly. Booth again poaching way off of her defender, and then that player getting the disc. 
Now into the end zone, but it's the final pass that gets away. Trying to target Onder for the score, but this is the kind of break opportunity Atlanta's got to use. Not going to be a chance to really fast break, however. I'll turn over this far downfield. So Booth checks it in on the coat. And they find an uncovered receiver in the middle of the field. High throw, trying to throw open the target Sagan Yarborough. But well, Sanders Sanders, not able to hit her. She didn't want to throw forehand there. And she tried to throw an inside backhand instead. And that's not, not the right throw in that situation. To the end zone, Terpstra. And this time, the throw to Ander works out. Couldn't get it on the first try. Ander said, don't worry, I got you this time. Swarm, despite a couple of turnovers, giving up a, a, some break, break opportunity, still get the hold. Well, Swarm, Swarm has given Atlanta a few chances. Five O-line turnovers. But Atlanta just one for five on break chances. And, and that one was the first one of the game. So it's been a long time since uh, the Atlanta D-line has found its way to the end zone. And uh, that's in part due to both the discipline execution uh, from Swarm not giving up a lot of short fields, not giving up a lot of fast break opportunities. A lot of their, a lot of their turnovers are coming in off you know, dead discs. But also they, they've been able to play strong, strong defense after the turnover. It's holding a six point edge, the second half. We've got three games coming to you from YCC today. The U20 girls final, U20 boys final to follow that. And we're filming other games as well, so if you want to get a chance to watch that, as well as action from the U.S. Open and World Ultimate Club Championships and the rest of the U.S. club season. Also get access to exclusive podcast content, analysis, stuff you can't get anywhere else. Find out about the benefits you can get with an Ultra World subscription. UltraWorld.com slash subscribe. Support the work that we do. Booth for and underneath and I do think we're seeing that change force from Utah. Maybe the coach heard us on the sideline. And an around break looking for Booth. That's a nice throw to space. Just beyond the reach of the bidding Booth. We haven't really seen a lot of throws to Booth in the scoring zone. Can't come up with that. Nice reset cut by Maurer. Create some room. Great double cut, taking advantage of the deep poaching booth. Now Huck going up, but short. Get a great roll, so. Get an extra 15 yards or so on the roll for the punt. Keely Baker ready to pick up. Great initiating cut from Pardo. <laughs> Trying to discuss, there was a call prior, a pick call, I think prior to the throw. So discussion about what should be the outcome. Not up front. It was right in here. So it does not affect this throw, right? So the picked person, there was no effect on that particular play no, with I that mean, throw, correct? Her and she dropped the throw. Oh, the pick was on her. Okay, then it comes back. But she dropped the throw. I think she dropped it, even though McKady wasn't there. So, so you don't. Yeah, I heard, I, 
So offense has to recognize. Un until right. offense recognizes, you have to keep playing. Okay. We have these issues very regularly. Okay. So if offense throws it, they don't get a free reset on a pick. So, right. so it is a turnover. Turnover stands. So if there aren't observers, you would just yell play on. Okay. So we are going to, uh, someone will just tap it and just we'll yeah. start playing. So, yeah, so just tap the ground. Whoever called the pick, tap the ground live. We might have had a very different outcome at one of the World Championship tournaments played under WIFDIF rules earlier this year, but in USA Ultimate rule set, that's a turnover every time because the offense didn't recognize the pick call and they turned it over. Pick call. Not really, a, not really a great way to build a system in that <laughs> deals with play, uh, a call happening and not necessarily everybody uh, on the field stopping play. One. Yeah, that sounds good. So you'll be so you'll be saying say say two. So you'll be saying two. Okay. Saying two. It's about thirty yards out. Selfridge looking to reset, but short arms a throw and it's blocked. Nice reset defense by McKenna Bunkaren. Booth firing deep, and there's the big forehand. Oh, and a big collision on the other end of it. Not a controlled play from Selfridge. And that disc looked like it was fully caught for the score, and that will be the resolution of the play. Yeah, Booth flashing the forehand, and we, we've said this a couple times. It, that her receivers have come up with some tough catches. Those are giving him a great opportunity to do that, but. You see there, there is a card issued for the defense for Selfridge. I was wondering if we were gonna see a card. It's the, the right play. I mean, honestly, it could have been a yellow card. I, you know, I think if this is an adult game, we might see a yellow card here because this is just a this is a very poor play. There's no opportunity to make a clean block. That's pretty heavy contact. This should be considered a dangerous play, and under the new system from USA Ultimate, that's a yellow card. Yeah, and it's it's not about you know, casting blame or saying this player's a an unfair player or a dangerous player or something like that. It's pure, it's at this especially at this level. It's it's a about player safety. You want to protect the players on the field, but also it's instructive. You know, for a lot of these players, they might not get a ton of chances to play with observers, to have a card system, to have these types of types of issues be handled. So it's a chance for players to learn about what is it like when there is a card issue? What is the effect on the game? Uh, how do your teammates react to that? How do the coaches react to that? Uh, and can be instructive for also the player receiving the card. Okay, I know that kind of play is not going to be acceptable. And I think we've seen more cards. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'd ever seen a card issue at YCC in years past. And that's, I've, I've, Watched four YCC games and seen two cards handed out. So uh, maybe it's something that is being used a little bit more. Hey, let's let's make sure that these young players are learning about this system and, and safety uh, on the field. Yeah, but that's why I want to see consistency from the observers because that's a yellow card. I, I'm not going to harp on it, but that should be a dangerous play yellow card just as it is in any other level of the sport. So glad to see that there is a card of some kind, but... Let's make sure we're consistent with what these calls are going to be. Deep shot, tracking a, a plenty of effort on the part of Terpstra, but maybe just not enough field. Difficult read. Atlanta still hunting for their first break of this second half. You have a back-to-back -back big scores. Could inject some energy in a cat Atlanta. Deep throw, trying to push into that space, but Cutter, uh, Cutter really far downfield, making that a difficult look to connect on. But a hand block the other way, getting it back. Keely Baker under throwing the huck, but swats away the potential deep look for Margaret Davis. 
Baker again trying to fire deep. I mean the Atlanta the Atlanta strategy is well known at this point, but Swarm trying to match him shot for shot. This one reeled in. Great catch by Stella Onder just outside the end zone. Great discipline reset execution from Swarm. Get the clear, find the filling reset option. But nowhere to really to go. High curling throw from Margaret Davis. And she gets the assist on a Swarm hold. A hard fought one, but their ability to play defense after the turn, staying strong and keeping them in it. Melissa Swalberg with the goal for Swarm. And that's two turnovers on bo both of the offensive points in this second half for Swarm. But a nice grab. Under pressure from Onder. And then Margaret Davis going into the end zone for Swalberg. Creative blading forehand past the defense. That's, that's not necessarily the type of, uh, of throw you might see a lot of young players think to throw in that situation. Stall count's getting higher. Cutting in front of you is stagnant. Just kind of throwing to the open space or working around defenders. It's a difficult throw to execute. But Davis able to drop it in right where she needs you. Sun breaking through the clouds here at Blaine. Welcome sight, I'm sure. It's been a, a bit of a chilly morning. 57 degrees right now. I mean, that's solid 20 degrees colder than it's been earlier this week. Even even more, I mean, it, the when we were here four days ago for our first day of the U.S. Open, it was in the high 80s, low 90s. Temperatures will warm up today, though. We're going to get all the way up to 78 degrees. Clouds burning off. Just a miscommunication between Baker and Booth. Booth looking to plant and come back, and Baker thinking Booth was headed up the line. No hesitation in reinitiating play for Swarm. Nice up line move by Maurer. That pattern continues, this time with Archibald. Archibald looking for the end zone. Deflected up in the air, but brought in. Nice catch by DeLuca to make sure that Swarm couldn't get a second effort. Now the deep throw going up for Booth, looking for Pardo, and well defended by Archibald. Archibald picking up quickly. And deflected catch. Selfridge. Gets to that one, and now looking to reset. So tough plays being made by both teams. And another difficult catch, but Selfridge not afraid to get dirty, even in the even in the fresh white jersey. Booth picks up. It's an under. Ella Dittmer forward. Now looking for options. Going to the end zone in a high stall situation. Like, like the decision, if, if your best option is a, a hard throw backwards and a hard throw forwards, might as well get the yards. Naomi Norton forced into that tough spot. But now it's Utah's disc power position. Holsters takes the under look. Utah again working the sideline. It's the opposite sideline this time. Maybe the force changed. And that throw comes out all wrong. Maybe slipping out of the hands. Nice hustle to stop the roll from 
Annika Archibald up six and still Swarm is fighting to stop even a couple of inches extra. Ankle breaking shoulder fake by Booth in the reset space. Not gonna go on the stat sheet, but look nice. And now Baker to the end zone. And DeLuca not able to catch up. Long point and, and asking a lot of these cutters to keep sprinting towards the end zone. So Baker's throw beyond the reach of DeLuca. Coming in on their own goal line. Swarm finds an upline option. <laughs> Pretty much the entire Swarm offense at this point has gone up one sideline or the other. Yeah, and Atlanta's just got to do a better job of taking away these strike cuts. It's just making... The downfield defense has been good. It's been these cuts that have cut them to pieces. Wrecker gets off a, a, a rare round. And it's going all the way around. And a second effort catch by Selfridge. I, I thought for sure the defense was going to pull that in, but Selfridge continues to show off the ability to make really difficult plays. And then there's one of those well-timed continues we talked about in the first half. Archibald just flying into the open space just after McKady Garside got the disc. And I love that timing. Handlers come up with the disc and don't even have to wait. Just a wide open target ready to go. Yeah, it's great offensive fundamentals. Early turnover for Swarm. Then how about this second effort grab? Selfridge not afraid of some contact, that's for sure. She's hit the ground. She'll go up and make a play in traffic. And then Archibald, superb continuation cut timing for the goal. Let's take a look at the bracket for the U-20 girls division. Downpour on the field behind us getting a dominant victory again, 15 to four over Riptide. They will face the winner here of Swarm and Catlana in the final. And it's been a lot of lopsided games. I mean, we see the one close game in the bracket so far has been Riptide and Seven Hills. But that game just a uh, formality for then getting crushed by downpour. And we'll see, you know, if Swarm ends up able to win this game, can they compete with that downpour team? Yeah, it'll be exciting to watch. I mean, we got to the to the point in the semifinals, and you're kind of seeing the teams tier themselves. And right now, these feel like the top tier of teams. Although the downpour has just been so so strong at this event, They're really living up to the name. Defending champs. And you gotta wonder after. The strength we've seen from downpour in the past couple of years and that South Eugene team that just crushed the competition at High School National Invite. And what is what is the future of this Oregon girls scene? And what, what what's going to be the impact on the wider ultimate community as these players advance further in their careers? Plenty of history in women's and girls play for Oregon. Portland Chua, a historic program, and Worker Fugue, one of the most successful and well-known college women's programs. Nice patience from Atlanta, but they finally get antsy. Said, I'm, I'm tired of this swinging business. Let's go towards the end zone, and Swarm's just waiting for it. Another big bid from Terpstra, who's hustling to try and make the play, but Melissa Swalberg's throw doesn't give her a not a shot. Baker walking it up, looking at that swarm zone once more. Four swarm players close to the disc, really trying to make sure that these 
Short range throws aren't gonna gain much yardage. Atlanta, again, settling in to just keep the disc moving horizontally until something opens up. Baker, not a lot of places to go, but finds a more aggressive option going over the top. Nice job by Storm's defense to make sure that doesn't cascade into more gains. Handlers working in amongst one another. Swarm's defense dutifully staying in front of them. And I, I like I like the disc movement. I like that Atlanta's waiting for something to open up, but they're not moving the disc in large enough swaths so that Swarm defense doesn't have to make a lot of adjustments. And lots of downfield space tempting the throwers into trying something harder. And the high throw from Sanders drops to ground and Turfstra bidding finally gets one. It's her third straight attempt in the end zone, throwing herself to the ground to make the play, and this time she comes up with the goal. Now you can see it's starting to wear on her as her team's up 14-6, but I'm sure she's happy to put her team just one goal away from advancing to the YCC girls U20 final. Another big layout up that sideline. And a nice job to keep those Toes down, inbounds, complete the catch before hitting the ground, and may have rung her bell a little bit hitting the ground. But look at the stat line for Terpstra. Her second goal there, three assists and just one turnover. She's been excellent for Swarm. So steady, just a very steady player, showed a, a lot of disc skill even though she's been operating a lot of downfield. Helped get Swarm to this big eight goal lead. And just looking to wrap it up now at this point. Just put that bow on this game. Well, we're gonna get this showdown in the final between the two most impressive teams at the tournament. It's going to be a tall task to try and contain uh, a skilled, fast-paced, athletic downpour team. But if there's one thing I've, I've learned from watching these Utah players, both Low Peak and Swarm, uh, really this players from this community, is, is they're not intimidated by anybody, and they will work extremely hard to try and accomplish things. Maybe uh, they're their talent level or their experience might not be all the way there at some points, but the effort is just nonstop. Pick call. Pick Gonna call. bring this disc back. Ten on four. Kinley Maurer calling pick. Sanders. Sends it up to Booth. That's another strategy Atlanta might, might have tried earlier, is, is getting Booth going as a cutter instead of centering to her, see if she gets her separation. And she breaks free downfield, high throw, and Booth just able to use all of that length to get that without a doubt, and then tries to fire up Catlanta, see if they can try and stir up a comeback. Well, your wish is granted, Keith. Booth gets downfield and talk about an appealing deep target. Booth's size and skill means that even a floating huck would be much better than a 50-50. Yeah, if you, if you feel comfortable with the other deep throwers, yeah, targeting Booth is, is another way to go about it. But I, I was actually thinking about getting Booth Trying to make it in isolation, maybe coming under, see if she can catch the disc with separation, maybe get a little more flow going rather than having her throw hucks from a standstill to a player's way downfield. You can just tell from the stats. We don't, we don't even see the touches in yardage to see how involved Booth has been 
in this team. Yeah, plenty of assists, goals, blocks, turns, but a lot of those turns coming on having to make the most difficult throws anybody's on this team has, has made. Those, those are just part of the role, really. Obviously, you, all, you pretty much always want fewer <laughs> of them when you can, but... Well, but the story of this game is really 20 turnovers for the Atlanta offensive line. They just have not been able to be consistent with the disc. A couple of clean holds. Just saw one there. That's their third clean hold of the game. But they've given the disc up a lot, and it's meant that Swarms had lots of opportunities to get moving with their D-line offense. Matchup defense from Atlanta meets the horizontal stack, and what a beautiful flowing offensive point. Wow, Lily Terpstra and Stella Onder end this game on a high note. I mean, that is, that is what you envision when you come out on offense, is points like that and swarm with a fantastic close to this one with great offensive execution, and that is emblematic of a team's, the team's skill and discipline. Just a gorgeous throw from Terpstra. I mean, maybe the best of the game. That or one of the big Quincy Booth hucks. But catching in isolation and then just a picture perfect forehand on a platter out to Onder. And a strong win here for Swarm. They remain undefeated and they will face the juggernaut Oregon downpour in the final. Yeah, if, there, if there's any team that, that can do it, uh, you got to think it might be this Swarm team. I mean, that, this Catalina team is a strong unit, has some great talent, and Swarm came out and really, really put the brakes on it. I think Swarm showed in this game that they were a much deeper team than Atlanta. They were winning the four, five, six, seven matchups on the line pretty consistently. The real challenge is going to be matching up with a downpour team that's going to easily match them in depth and probably be better than them in the athleticism department. It's going to take maybe a perfect game from Swarm to beat this downpour team as we take a look at the game stats. Pretty one-sided in this one. Swarm's D-line had a lot of turnovers, but uh, Atlanta's offense, 20 turns. Yeah, uh, in my experience, uh, these the Swarm is going to be able to get a couple turnovers. I, I don't think that we're going to see a, a perfect game out of the other side. If Swarm's D-line can execute like they did at some, on some of these points, when they just took the easy option, got the disc moving, went side to side, and set up great continue cuts, they can be really efficient with their break opportunities. That, that to me, is, is a great ticket to them to get in and, and maybe pull off an incredible upset in the U-20 girls final here at the Youth Club Championships. Some great plays from both sides. Quincy Booth dialing up some backhand hucks. Some smooth upline movement from Swarm. Bring it in. Take a snapshot. We're going to the finals. Booth did her best. Some sweet catches downfield for Atlanta. Cecilia Pardo with the grab. But how, how, how Annika Archibald, Audrey Selfridge, and the rest of this swarm unit. Dime ball finish from Lily Terpstra in Utah, heading to the finals 15-7 over Catlana.